Morning folks, Indy Truck Davey in the truck. It's a Monday morning. I'm going to live by halfway between Peterhead and Aberdeen on the A90. Exactly halfway actually. And it is a pushing it down. Snow's no reached here yet. And it's five degrees. If you hear a noise in the background, that's because I've got my night heater on keeping me warm during this break. Um, a right, quick rundown of the big news stories of the weekend, okay? Um, first up, Nick Herdley making mischief. The BBC um, trying to make out that Miss Sturgeon, the First Minister, isn't secure in her position. Which, as we know, the SNP are renowned for great discipline. And as far as I can see, our Jake has known a sugary peg yet. There's a lot of people unhappy that things are not moving along as quickly as they could. But well, Jake is known as Shugly Peg yet. Um, and the other thing is that the First Minister has written to Boris Johnson demanding a meeting about the immigration po policy. Um, because it is going to be absolutely devastating for Scottish fishing, Scottish farming, Scottish care sector, Scottish manufacturing sector, um, Scottish construction sector. Um, the fishing sector, you name it, it's going to be devastating right across the board. We are dropping a, um, well, our population will probably drop um, because it's been thanks to freedom of movement that our population started to grow again. Westminster's no keen on not being able to control our population because I've stated this before. Um, if they can keep our population down, then we're one less worry for them. Right? And the other thing that Miss Sturgeon said at the weekend is she's still aiming for a referendum at the end of this year. Now, in the manifesto, it says uh, a referendum after the change of, after the change of circumstances, a referendum in the life of this parliament. Well, this parliament doesn't finish the next May, so keep your bonnet on, guys. Um, and that'll be the thing that's going on up here is the um, the People's Alliance. Um, Gordon's mentioned this, Gordon Ross has mentioned this a few times. It seems to be hitting a few hurdles at the moment. Um, people are very suspicious it's a left wing alliance or parties that people in Scotland wouldn't vote for anyway. But as I say, for me, I'm no opposed to the idea. Um, for me, there needs to be a lot more research. I mean, this idea of basing it in one election and the outcome of one election, no, you have to wind back to 2011 when they get 16 list M MSPs for the SNP on the. On the on the list, and then you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the elections and break it down party by party and how they did to see if this would actually work. I'm no, I guess I say, I'm not against the idea, but I'm not 100% convinced about it because I don't think there's been enough research done here. So, see, 2011, the SNP scored 16 seats on the list, and that's what gave them the overall majority. Um, to say that you could guarantee that they're going to wipe the floor on the constituencies. Well, that's no easy to say because we are still a long way out for this uh, referendum. And as we've just seen, Nick Eardley, the BBC is trying to cause mischief for the SNP. And if any of this stuff penetrates, you can see the drop, uh, you can see a drop off and vote for the SNP. At the moment, they're polling 50%. They might not be polling 50% next May. But as I say, I'm yet to be convinced, but at the same time, I'm not opposed to the idea, right? Other big things at the weekend, the EU have threatened sanctions against the United Kingdom if the United Kingdom government doesn't introduce the necessary checks on goods going into and out of Northern Ireland. Now, it uh, has come out over the weekend that Boris has tasked um, some civil servants to find a way around this so, they can, uh, so that they don't have to comply with what the EU is asking them to do. Okay? Um, as I say, but Northern Ireland's up in the air at the moment. It could well be another, um, there could well be a unification pool there sometime in the near future. Right, uh, something oh, that was really big at the weekend was the war at the Home Office and Pretty Patel and her status as Home Secretary. Now, if the reports are true, one of her uh, senior advisors has already, already quit. Um, she's been accused of being a bully, rude, hard to work for, and it's also now been uh, alleged that MI5 won't share information where because she doesn't understand 
the intricacies of um, the security network. So MI5 are no keen on keen on any information. There is a link to Israel as well. As well. Um, a, but the other thing that's been made clear for over the weekend is that Pretty Patel has continued in the hostile environment towards a um, foreigners, whether they be Europeans or for anywhere else in the world. There's also a man, a UK citizen, stuck in um, Belgium at the moment, in Brussels, because his passport was revoked while he was at the country and he wasn't aware he had even sent a letter to a rang address. That's how shambolic this government is. Now, uh, another big story at the weekend, the Environment Secretary has said that they won't guarantee food standards and he has refused to rule out the notion that um, beef injected, hormone injected beef and chlorinated chickens will make it into the UK. He's refusing to rule that out. Uh, big, big story at the weekend. Pentagon leaks the UK's uh, um, future nuclear uh, weapons deal before MPs have even seen it. They'll give you a stushy about that over the next couple of days in the Commons, no doubt. Um, yeah. So, as I say, we now know that in the past we have uh, got the delivery system. We've had the delivery system, sorry about that, uh, we had the delivery system for America and the nuclear warheads were ours. Now it looks like the whole lot's coming for America, the delivery system and the new call warheads. So these are details that will come out every weekend. They weren't even supposed to be um, out. The, the Pentagon's leaked it. And as I say, I imagine there'll be a stooshie in the Commons about this. Uh, Bojo's aides, another big story, Bojo's aides have been told to plan up, uh, make plans to further neuter the trade union movement. Um, basically, they're trying to deal with their rights to collectively bargaining. Because, as we all know, at the end of this transition period, there is going to be an out and out attack on workers' rights. Things like maternity leave, holiday pay, pensions, all these things are going to be attacked. So, that's, a, that's another big story at the weekend. Um, and, of course, Gordon Brown, clunk and fist, has been reanimated. Um, and he's come away to say that uh, Scotland's one of the most divided countries in the Western world. And it's only divided because it is now no going his way. The polls now show that uh, the majority of people favour independence. So, Gordon Brown, Mr Clunkin Fist, Mr Has Been, the guy that's no entitled to an opinion, he isn't a politician, the guy that's going to have power, has decided that he's going to do something about it. And he's going to tour communities in Scotland to convince them that the union's the right way to go and that independence is the wrong way to go. He's saying it's to find a way forward. Um, he thinks the system's broke and he wants a federal system. But it doesn't matter what Mr Brown wants. He's not an MP. He's not the leader of any political party. He doesn't hold any power whatsoever. And my advice to everybody on the yes side and the no side is ignore this has been. Just ignore him. He's no worth the time a day. Right, and the final item I want to talk about is, a, and I took a wee note of this because this comes from one of the viewers. So if you give me a wee second. Um, so in closing today's discussions, I want to address a, one of the fears of a, one of your viewers. Uh, one of the viewers, and uh, this, this, the viewer is um, Linda Archer, and her question was about the 7.5% deficit. Well, the 7.5% deficit is, isn't, isn't it actually Scotland's deficit, Linda? Um, I'll direct the, the viewer directly if you don't mind, folks. It's no Scotland's deficit, Linda, right? It's actually um, Scotland gets allocated the share of the UK's debt, right? And that then becomes our deficit. Um, but the thing about that is, in the event of, divo uh, in the event of divorce, um, the Vienna Convention and the Vienna Accords will be applied. There is structures out there to deal with the breaking up of states. And one of the things that the Vienna Convention and, uh, will look at 
as how much Scotland has paid in to the UK early recent years. And as we have put in 300 billion more than what we took out, I think we can safely say that the 15 billion will be deducted for that and we'll start with no deficit. I think that would be fair enough to say because, as I say, the Vienna Accords are there and they're there to ensure that states, when they break up, um, that, that shares and allocations of joint assets and things like that are all done, are all separated properly. I, it's the sort of thing a divorce lawyer would do, except for the Vienna Accords is uh, the Vienna Accords or the Vienna Convention, whatever you want to put it, is there embedded in international law, and it's a route map for breaking up states that are going to break up uh, for a uh, the divorce of uh, unions and the breaking up of states into uh, small states. So I hope that uh, covers your concerns, Linda. Right, well, that's uh, Monday. As I say, there was a uh, seven big news articles that I picked to speak about the day. I say the BBC are creating mischief in order to try and destabilise the SNP on the run up to the next election. EU have threatened the sanctions on the UK if they do not put border controls in place between the UK and Northern Ireland. The Home Office has gone up in smoke and MI5 just won't share information with um, the Home Secretary if the reports are true. Today they're trying to say rubbish them, but you never know. Um, Environment Secretary won't protect food standards. Um, Pentagon leaks <laughs> information on <coughs> new nuclear uh, <coughs> weapons. And a uh, Bojo and the Tories, no surprise here, trying to undermine the trade union organisations, the trade union movement, so that after the, I believe, after the transition period they can get battered in about workers' rights. And as I say, the deficit, Linda, it's no real, it's an, it's, a, it's an allocated share of the UK debt, and that allocated share of the UK debt will probably disappear in the divorce proceedings. So that's it for this morning. Andy Truck Davy and the Truck coming to you today from a lay-by on the A90, halfway between Peterhead and Aberdeen, where it's passionate at noon and it's five degrees. Have a nice day. <laughs>